Hi, my name is Callie Chappelle, and welcome to this video about MS2 phage, how mRNA can control translation. So we're talking about um, we're talking about translational control, and early studies on translational control were done in these positive strain phages, for example, R17, F2, or the focus of this video, MS2. And they have two big characteristics. The first is that their genomes are also their RNAs, which is really cool, especially if you're interested in the interaction between mRNA and translation, and also that they only encode three genes, a maturation protein, a coat protein, and a replicase. So what I've drawn here is a portion of the MS2-phage genome. And so remember, because their genomes are also their RNAs, we're looking at RNA, which you can tell because of these crazy structures that I think are really cool. And so I'm just going to point out a couple of key features here, and then we are going to zoom in a little bit more on what's going on. And before I point out those features, I just want to show you that this section is just a zoomed in portion of this because I recognize it's a little bit hard to see on this screen. So we've got three things here. The first is this. So this is a gene for um, what looks to be the maturation protein. And here is the, let's see, here's the stop, here's the stop codon for that. So the rest of that gene goes on here. Now, here we've got the initiation codon for the coat protein, and the coat protein gene is all of this here in light blue, all right? And it stops all the way over here, where we've got two stop codons in tandem, which actually isn't that uncommon, even if you perhaps haven't seen that before. And finally, as we move this way, we've got a Scheindel-Garno sequence. You can't, it's a little bit hard to see, so I've drawn it a little bit bigger here. The Scheindel-Garno sequence and the replication initiation codon, this AEG, for the replicase gene, which is shown all the way down here, which is shown in this direction. All right, the replicase gene continues on over here. And so what you can tell is that if I zoom in over here, the shine garno sequence and this replication initiation codon is sequestered in the stem structure because of base pairing with the coat gene. And because the shine garno sequence and the replicase initiation, especially the shine garno sequence is base pairing with something else, if they want translation of the replicase gene, it simply can't happen because the ribosome can't access this already base paired shine garno sequence. So if the coat gene is not being translated, if the this base pairing is occurring, then the ribosome cannot bind at the replicase shine del garno. However, when the cogene is being translated, when translation and the ribosomes hopped onto the cogene and it's translating that protein, what it does is break the space pairing between the shine del garno sequence and this part of the cogene. All right, it breaks the space pairing that you see here. And that allows the ribosome to hop onto the shine del garno sequence and then cause translation of the replicase gene, which is shown in this direction. This is a really interesting way that uh, that that other the translation of other parts of the mRNA can result in translation of other of other genes, such as the replicase gene being controlled by the coat gene here. I hope this was interesting for you, and I thought it's pretty cool, and hope to see you in the future.